Join us on Born to Explore as we journey to South Africa to discover how it's transforming itself into a vibrant land of opportunity and hope. It is incredible watching children grow and wanting to excel. We find out how an endangered species is thriving once again. Who's this one who's having the bad hair day? That's Rocky, she's our northern rock hopper. And meet the team of dedicated scientists working hard to save them. We encounter some amazing young performers from the townships of Cape Town who are pointing the way towards a dynamic new nation. And we visit a neighborhood where everything's in technicolor and discover how the rich aromas of Cape Malay cuisine can spice up your life. If you are a curry fan, I wish you could smell this. I'm Richard Wees. I've been an explorer my entire life, and I'm still passionate about adventure. New people, places, and natural wonders. I was born to explore. At the southernmost point of the African continent is one of the most colorful and vibrant cities in the world. Welcome to Cape Town and welcome to South Africa. South Africa, which is about twice the size of Texas, is where the Indian Ocean meets the Atlantic. With its tremendous ethnic and cultural diversity, it's no wonder that South Africa is sometimes called the Rainbow Nation. And the wildlife here is nothing short of amazing. I've heard a lot recently about the new South Africa and all the positive changes taking place in this post-apartheid era. My mission? To experience that transformation firsthand, to find out how endangered wildlife here is being protected, and how a new generation of young South Africans is stepping into the limelight. This is Cape Town, a seaside playground whose cosmopolitan spirit blends with stunning natural wonders, including Table Mountain, offering some of the most spectacular views in all of Africa. I start my exploration in the picturesque neighborhood of Bois This area is certainly colorful, and in more ways than one. It's the center of Cape Malay culture and cuisine, a spicy fusion of Southeast Asian traditions. Shireen Narkidian has lived here for more than 20 years. Cape Malay cooking was spicy. It's got the Eastern flavor. It's got the European flavor because it's the Dutch and British that influence the cooking as well. You know, I think there's certain universal languages around the world, and food always is one. You don't even have to speak the same language, and no. you see food or you can smell it. The tongue says it all. We're going to the Atlas Wholesale Trading it's Company. Company. It's the best shop to buy. Oh, this is the wow. place to be. The Atlas Trading Company is a family-run business where you can find some of the freshest spices around. Richard, smell the spice. Okay. That's cumin. That's roasted and ground oh, cumin. Oh, nice. Turmeric. Ah, turmeric. Look at this. Even the color looks good on turmeric. You know, spices, in many respects, is the history of the world. This is the history of the world. This is how the world comes together, Richard. Yeah. Oh, I love this. I'm getting hungry. So what you do is you dip your finger. This is for barbecues. Is there a little bit of pepper in there? Not pepper, chili. Chili, oh, that's what I'm, um, yeah. But you've also got your, your finest spices in it. You've got your herbs in it. It's all mixed together. Well, now it's got my saliva in it, too, so. <laughs> Down the block, we meet Jaina Masowet, who serves up some of the best Malay food in Cape Town. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me to your home. Welcome, welcome. Some flour. I'm helping Jaina make an authentic Cape Malay meal. First, we make Rudy, a flatbread made from flour, water, and a little butter. Next, samosas, a small triangular-shaped pastry that's a favorite Cape Malay appetizer. You fold it over, right? No, wrong, Richard. <laughs> wrong, okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> when I finally fold it right, I fill the samosa with a little meat seasoned with onion and coriander. Right, like 
In Janup's kitchen, we fry the Rudy for five minutes on both sides. There we go. This is now done now. This is the magic yeah. of her cooking yeah. for a lot longer than I have. Now it's time for the main dish. Okay, what do we do? Chicken curry. We add turmeric, coriander, cumin, caramel sticks, green pepper, some garlic. Okay, I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna put a lot of garlic. I'm gonna live That's dangerously, it. yeah. Then some chicken, cook for half an hour, and... If you are a curry fan, I wish you could smell this. Now Shireen joins Janep and me as we enjoy this amazing Cape Malay meal. As a tissue. Okay, try that. Thank you very much for this wonderful cuisine and for inviting me into your home. So. It was a pleasure. Not far from the Bwakop neighborhood stand the many townships of Cape Town. In these crowded urban areas, life can be a struggle and opportunities for advancement are few. But there's a feeling of hope in the air. These young people are practicing for a local talent competition. It's sponsored by Imimbala, a group that's transforming the lives of thousands of young kids here by nurturing their talents and building their confidence and self-respect. It is incredible watching children grow, watching children build up an incredible self-esteem and watching children really and truly wanting to excel. Next, we travel into the townships to meet some of these incredible kids and see what happens when they take the stage. I'm in Cape Town, South Africa. Here in one of its townships, a group of young people are rehearsing for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to participate in a talent competition run by Imimbala, a charity that's opening new doors for thousands of kids and their families. 11-year-old Sean Carl Janicki is practicing a poem about a new baby brother coming home for the first time. Imimbala offers free art programs, pays school fees for many of these students, and provides school uniforms. The kids we support are the poorest of the poor. The fact that they are desperate for a school uniform um, tells you that. But while their resources may be small, these kids' dreams are as big as the sky. 13-year-old Asamali Sentiwe has her heart set on becoming an opera singer. Asamali has invited me to her home in the township of Nanzamo, where she lives in this small two-room house with her mother and younger brother and sister. At what age did you know that she could sing? Five. Five years old, yeah, and she was already singing really yeah. well. Word of our visit has spread fast, and we discover that Asamali is not the only one who loves to break into song. When you dream at night, do you dream about singing in opera? Yes, <laughs> to be a superstar of opera. The people here, they say to me, when you sing, you have to give your whole heart to the, vo to the song you sing and never lose the love we have for you like, com like, it's com like a community. Your singing is beautiful. And I think that when people hear that, they feel the spirit of South Africa, so. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
I also visit the home of another contestant, 12-year-old Nick Reach Thomas, who'll be competing in the dance category with his two friends. Most of these trophies are for competitions they've won. These guys are good. Which is the most uh, important one? This one. Wh which was this? This was for the um, um, League Champions of Stable. You won this? Yes. And you? Wow. Nick Reach, along with Ronaldo Daniels and Jacobus Leonard, have rehearsed for weeks with their friend Reginald Isnu, who choreographed the dance they'll be performing. Five, six, seven, eight, go. One, two, one, two, three. You can do the right arm and you can do up. As we leave, we hear other voices raised in song coming from a nearby church. The minister invites us in. You walk in there, you look around, see young and old. There's uh, a great spirit in there. People are very warm and welcoming. And it, it just reinforces certain things in your mind that even though you're poor, you can still dream, you can still be talented, you can still make something of your life. Next, we find out how these young students fare in the Imimbala talent competition. And we meet some tiny penguins with some outsized personalities. <laughs> I'm in Cape Town, South Africa, on a journey to meet its penguins. But first, the Imibala talent competition is underway in a local town hall. The Imibala team and local schools have been preparing for this big night for months. After running talent heats for hundreds of kids, strutting their stuff in a wide array of performances, it's now down to 20 finalists. For Nick Reach and his fellow performers who call themselves Identity, this is one giant step on their journey to reaching their dreams. In the spoken word category, Sean Carl clearly captures the hearts of the audience. And Asamali's performance of a well-known hymn, well, it rocks. The show is now over. The judges announce their decisions. Sean Carl wins for spoken word. Asamali for singing. And for dance performance? Identity. The Imimbala competition has been a deeply touching experience for me. I'm inspired by the spirit of renewal and hope here, and I also discovered that that spirit extends far beyond the townships and cities. I'm on Boulders Beach in South Africa. When you think of African wildlife, perhaps you think of rhinos, lions, or even a giraffe. But there are other animals which also call Africa home. Boulders Beach, just south of Cape Town, is home to a colony of African penguins. In 1982, two pairs of these birds settled here. Today, the penguin colony in this protected area has grown to more than 3,000. They like boulders. I think it's the safe place for them, actually. The African penguin is also called the jackass penguin because it brays like a donkey. African penguins, which only grow to about two feet tall, live just in the southern hemisphere. They cannot fly, but they can dive deeper and stay underwater longer than any other bird. And they are loyal partners. They mate for life. What's not to love? Each and every morning, I have to calm down and take a walk just to see them if they are safe. Here in South Africa, penguins are a precious national treasure. 
No one knows that better than the dedicated team at SANCOB, the Southern African Foundation for the Conservation of Coastal Birds. This group's mission is to rescue and rehabilitate African penguins and other seabirds that are sick, injured, or orphaned. Why is it important that we have penguins in Africa? I think they're just hugely charismatic species. Um, if I give you the technical, they're uh, indicator species. So that tells you that if the penguins are doing well, that the oceans are doing well. People don't expect them to be here. I think penguins, I think ice. We don't have ice, we have hot sunshine. So I think it's just amazing for our biodiversity that they, that they are here. Next, up close and personal with African penguins. I've returned to Sandcob, just outside the city of Cape Town. This environmental group rescues oiled, sick, and injured coastal birds, including the endangered African penguin, and reintroduces them to their natural habitats. Give us an idea of the magnitude of the work you've done since its inception. We have saved 90,000 seabirds, half of those being African penguins, since we started about 44 years ago. Wow, 90,000. That's a lot of little wings. Right now, I'm about to earn my wings. I am going to kit up in my uh, our, sand cob green, this is right? Our sand cob oil skins. Yes. What are we feeding them? Sardines, right? Sardines, that's uh, great. I hope they yes. like sardines. I like sardines. <laughs> yeah, they're just for the penguins, not you. Okay. <laughs> Romy leads me to what is called the home pen. I think mm. these guys know it's lunchtime. Oh, wow, what an enthusiastic <laughs> bunch. Friend. Who's this one who's having the bad hair day? That's Rocky. She's our northern rock hopper. She's going to go into molt, so that's why she's starting to lose her outer feathers there. How old is this one? Rocky's about four years old, and we've had her at sand camp for three years. Some penguins stay here for only a few weeks before being released. Others may not be able to survive in the wild and remain for several years. What, what do you find most interesting about penguins? I mean, you sit here and you watch them for hours on end. Well, just the fact that they are completely different and have such different personalities, you know. To some people, a penguin's a penguin, but when you start working with them on a daily basis, you start recognizing their different characteristics and how they behave and the relations they have with each other. What is it that you love most about your job here? We're saving an endangered species, so for me, it's quite rewarding. Sand Cobb also raises orphan chicks and releases them when they're old enough to survive. These chicks need to be fed several times a day. This is our four smallest ones. Wow. So they need to get fish and formula now. So okay. formula is like a fish smoothie. Okay. So the first one I have would be 573. There's okay. the one all the way at the bottom. 573 yep. and it's 46 uh, okay. grams of fish. But we'll have our little formula first. Formula first. And the tube is, so you put it down its I'm throat? Gonna, I'm going to put it down all the way to its stomach. And I'm sure there's quite a bit of training and thought that goes into yes, this. Yes, especially with these little guys. It's a, such a delicate process, and they regurgitate so easily. So that's why it's such... All right, come on, take it all. See, it's being very cooperative. And the, the hopes here that, you know, they'll continue to gain weight and be able to ultimately be released? Yeah, so every day, every morning before we start, we weigh them and then we see how much weight they gained. Come on, five, seven, three. <laughs> Bring it down. Uh, okay. Mm, come. So this little guy, we got in as a guy who newly hatched, his eyes were still closed. Yeah. So we've had him for about a month or so, and we really walked a long way with him. He was quite sick in the beginning, and he's doing a lot better now. So it's very exciting for people who work with him. I mean, do they, when they open their eyes and they see you, are, are you <laughs> de facto its mother? I'm, I'm not mum, no. <laughs> we make sure they don't like imprint on us, so we only handle them when we really need to. Yeah. We do want them to stay wild. The quiet dedication of the Sand Cob team to these coastal birds is deeply inspiring. There are 18 varieties of penguins around the world, and in general, people think of them from being Antarctica. But here you have a colony that is living in very close proximity with people, and it, it's uh, quite amazing, and, and you realize that they do need help, that penguins are threatened here, that uh, because of the good work of the people at Sand Cob, that they'll have a future in Africa.
Join the adventure and connect with us on Facebook. Africa has been called the cradle of life, but sometimes what is old is new. It's full of infinite surprises, whether it be a small group of penguins marching down the beach or a young girl singing opera in a township. Africa never ceases to amaze me.